The chair of the IPCC, Dr. Pachauri, is about to present the panel's synthesis report. And the message it contains could not be simpler. The threat of climate change is real, and there are concrete and affordable ways to deal with it. This was a mammoth exercise, as is the tradition of the IPCC. About 450 lead authors from over 130 countries, and including, of course, the 2,500 scientific expert reviewers and 800 contributing authors. You have the best available science and expertise drawn from all over the world. The IPCC's diligent work is a key building block in our efforts to mitigate the effects of climate change. The awarding of the Nobel Peace Prize to the IPCC is a testament to this. Today, the world's scientists have spoken clearly and with one voice. Human-induced warming would lead to some impacts that are abrupt or irreversible. Slowing and reversing these threats is the defining challenge of our age. These scenes are frightening as science fiction movies. But they are even more terrifying because they are real. Meters of sea level rise, major changes in coastlines and inundation of low-lying areas. And approximately 20 to 30 percent of species assessed so far are likely to be at increased risk of extinction. Melting glaciers will trigger mountain floods and lead to water shortages in Southeast Asia and South America. Rising sea levels could inundate small island developing states. Reduced rainfall will aggravate water and food insecurity in Africa. In Africa, between 75 to 250 million people are projected to be exposed to increased water stress. This will be by 2020. And in some countries, yields from rain-fed agriculture would be reduced by 50%. And in Asia, you have problems of fresh water availability. The changing weather and temperature patterns can potentially push developing countries back into the poverty trap and to undo much of the progress towards the Millennium Development Goals. We cannot let this happen. Our response to climate change in Bali and beyond will not be effective if it sacrifices the poverty, eradication and development aspirations of developing countries. That is why industrialized nations need to continue to take the lead in climate change abatement. But at the same time, we cannot ignore the reality that if developing countries fail to join the effort, there can be no viable solution. May I say that I think every country in the world has to be committed to a shared vision and a set of common goals and actions. How do we prepare the human race to face sea level rise in a world with new geographical features, because that's what sea level rise of this uh, extent implies. Is the current pace and pattern of development sustainable? We need to ask some fundamental questions. What changes in lifestyles, behavior patterns, and management practices are needed, and by when? Unless governments provide the markets of this world the right signals and the right incentives, these transitions that are listed in these reports will simply not happen because the market alone cannot deliver. But the market with the right incentives and the right regulatory frameworks is perfectly capable of delivering gigatons of reductions in greenhouse gas emissions in the timelines that the IPCC has shown so very clearly in its report. Concerted and sustained action now 
can still avoid some of the most catastrophic scenarios under your forecast. The private sector, the consumer and the markets need signals that governments can give through legislation, incentives and subsidies that make sense from a carbon management perspective. Fortunately, humanity has within its reach a number of solutions. A wide variety of policies and instruments are available to governments to create the incentives for mitigation action. Stabilization levels assessed can be achieved by deployment of a portfolio of technologies that are either currently available or expected to be commercialized in the coming decades. Why is it that in the year 2007, when we have technology to motor and power vehicles with 4 liters per 100 kilometers, we are still building and selling cars with 16, 18 liters per 100 kilometers? We have hybrid technology, we have others that have been in the pipeline for a long time. It is also time that industry and the private sector <coughs> offer the market the products that will allow us to achieve those greenhouse gas emission reductions. We can achieve significant greenhouse gas reductions simply by dealing with energy efficiency use. I think this is also a citizen's guide to engaging with climate change because without people caring about what this IPCC has given us, there will not be the level of political action. It depends ultimately on citizens who elect their governments. Unless people care about what is written in here, political leaders cannot move. Let us recognize that the effects of climate change affect us all and that they have become so severe and so sweeping that only urgent global action will do. We are all in this together. Together we can do even more than address climate change. We can transform a necessity into a virtue. We can pursue new and improved ways to produce, consume, and discard. We can promote environmentally friendly industries that spur development and job creation, even as they reduce emissions. We can usher in a new era of global partnership, one that helps lift all boats on the rising tide of climate-friendly development. I can tell you with assurance that global sweeping concerted action is needed now. There is no time to waste. We must save all the treasures of our planet for the sake of succeeding generations. I would like to end by quoting from Mahatma Gandhi. He said, be the change you want to see in the world. And I think therefore what we really need is a new ethic by which every human being realizes the importance of the challenge we are facing and starts taking action to meet it effectively through changes in lifestyle, through changes in attitude and behavior. Thank you very much.